it's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond, and this is a light episode with Bart Bouchatz, where he's going to talk to us about weather apps for privacy and functionality. I read the show notes ahead. I cheated, and this is, looks really, really interesting. Now, Bart, what makes you think you're qualified to talk about weather? I have some. <laughs> the thing I always found the most funny about being in California was that you would hear the weather person say, there's a 20% chance of weather. And in my mind, I'm going, what, is it going to be a vacuum? What, what, are you, what are you having instead? But you guys seem to mean anything that is not sun. So clear sky, yeah. not weather. I have, I have a lot I, of weather. I really think they could... There's a text expander snippet for our weather. It's early morning low clouds followed by hazy afternoon sunshine. <laughs> that is the that is the weather report every every day pretty much. And and yet they have these things like live Doppler 7000 HD still sunny. I was gonna say, how do you show nothing in high def? It's like, oh, there are lots of pixels not showing anything <laughs> reflecting radar waves. <laughs> yeah, I have exactly, quite a bit of exactly. weather. Well, living in Ireland You've got rain and you're an avid biker. So one of the things that the audience doesn't hear is uh, I'm constantly getting these updates where Bart's sending me little radar maps going, OK, if I dodge left, turn right, if I go down the mountain that way, no, no, that'll be into the wind. Let me go over this way. I'm going to go along this canal through this bridge. I should be able to wait there for 15 seconds, and then I'll be home and I'll only be mostly wet. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time dodging rain clouds. I've gotten quite good at it, actually, but weather apps help a lot. And the other thing we tend to have is very variable temperatures. And so you're, you're going to get dressed in the morning and you're looking going, what? And the answer is just layers. And the question is, does one of the layers have to be waterproof or can it be more comfortable clothes? No. OK, do I wear waterproof shoes or comfortable shoes? OK, waterproof shoes today. So I am always on actually, the hunt for if you apps. want, if you want the what to wear in the rain uh, in Ireland uh, episode, listen to the latest episode of Let's Talk Photography, where he goes through the entire wardrobe before he can talk about now. Now that you're out there and you're comfortable, here's what you can shoot. That is true, actually. Yeah, um, and I think one of the earliest things when Apple gave us third-party apps, one of the first things I went for was weather apps. Which means I've been using the same stuff for a really long time. And what I ended up with was way too many of them. They all, by their nature, have per access to my location. Because how do you get uh. useful weather without that? And then two sort of things made me rethink things. So first off, a really fun story on Mac Stories about a completely new take on a weather app, which I hadn't seen in years. It's like, how do you do something... There are hundreds of weather apps. How do you be truly original? Well, there's an app called Looks Like Rain. And it's one of those, <laughs> you know, Tim Verporten does one thing and does it really well. And it very clearly solves my problem. And when I looked at the screenshots and read the description, I was like, wow, these, this developer has actually done something original. So I went and bought it and they didn't offer a free version. They were like, we don't want to spy on you. Therefore, we're charging for this. It's like, ah. Oh. That's interesting. <laughs> Singing uh, Bert's song. Yeah. And then not long after, like a few weeks later, there was a, one of the guests on the talk show was another weather app developer who also developed a weather app that is actually new and original. It's called Weather Up with an exclamation point. So they obviously went to the Yahoo school of naming things. And <laughs> so David Barnard is a developer. And on the one hand, it was cool to hear him talk about how he thought differently about a weather app. And in his case... He is actually using the interactivity feature in widgets. So his app is widget first. It's like if all you do is put the widget on your home screen, you kind of have everything you need because it's really dynamic. And when you click on it, it expands out and stuff all within the widget, which is kind of cool. But the second half of the discussion was about the economics of running a weather app because um. Every single weather app is paying someone for weather data. They're, they Right, right. So even a free weather app is not free to run for the developer. So either they're making a loss or they're monetizing you. So if you're not paying them, they're selling you somehow. Best case scenario, ads. But it's way more lucrative to sell your location included tracking data. That is like, the, that is what the trackers all want. And every weather app has to have your location. And what really caught right. my eye was that David said that when you're a weather app developer, you get proactively contacted by 
tracking companies making you oh, very that. big offers. Yeah. That's that's not a good incentive. Wow. So that sort of made me... Th- you know, I learned this actually from Bartender, because Bartender can can show a little weather thing. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. And it said, yeah, give us $10 a month or something like that. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, what's that? And that's why I was like, oh, weather's not free, but Bartender does not track you, I assume. Right, because they're giving you the cost, which is, yeah, that's what you kind of want yeah. to see. Was it Menu Meters or Bartender? Or maybe both, because Menu Meters definitely does oh. that too. Yeah, may have been, may have been, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, they need to pay. And so I sort of ended up thinking about it going, you know, what's on my phone? It's like, oh, wow. So it's a mess of apps that I've had for years and slowly building up. A lot of them were free. They all had my location access. And to be honest, none of them were modern. None of them were actually making use of Apple's current new APIs and features. And so what I ended up with was... Way too many apps on my iPhone, no widgets that I really liked, so I wasn't really using the widget functionality. On my watch, I had to give three complications over to weather because every weather app seems to believe in in being information sparse. So you give it supposedly a big piece of space, but no, it it only shows you one thing. So you know the way on the uh, modular face, you have a really big spot in the middle. When you give that to Apple Weather, it doesn't give you lots of information. It just gives you one metric over a long period of time. So then you still have to use your smaller complications for the other metrics. So would you like to know the temperature Uh, and the rain and the wind? Oh, that's now three complications, right? Actually, that's one of my big pet peeves. Of course, what I'm looking for is the UV index. (laughs) Because <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I need temperature and UV index. But what I've been doing is going tap, 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 tap. Oh, there it is. Which, yeah, which I really don't like on the, on the Apple built-in weather app. Because, you, yeah, on the watch, there's a lot of scrolling involved again on the weather app. So I wasn't happy with any weather apps on the watch. I wasn't happy with the complications. I wasn't really getting great value out of the new widget features in iOS. I was just like, I don't think I'm doing this right. And I realize I've accidentally stumbled into a privacy train wreck. So why don't I start over? Why don't I actually start from scratch and choose the apps that actually work for me? And so what I wanted was a good iOS lock screen widget, some nice home screen widgets, a good app. You know that that widget screen that's to the left? No, yeah, to the left of your home screen. That. Right, the one I always forget exists until I accidentally swipe that direction. Yeah, I mean, I wanted some good apps to be sitting there so they're always available because I make very heavy use of focus and I use focus to change my home screen. So when I'm in work, my home screen has completely different apps and a different background so that my brain comprehends that it's in the other mode, which is actually a really good way to keep yourself on track with things. So the widget screen is actually really good because it's always the same. So that's a place where you can put things you don't want annoying you. You don't want them sort of in your face distracting you, but you want them to always be the same and to always be there. So I have one home screen with the app drawer on the right and that widget screen on the left. And so the the main screen when I swipe home gives me the appropriate work stuff or personal stuff. Okay. So I wanted widgets for that and I wanted my watch face back. I, I wanted... I wanted some more complications for other things other than, you know, three weather complications. <laughs> I wanted to take them back. Right, right. And so I started to go through everything I had and figure out which ones I'm paying for. Turns out I was paying for more than I was using, which is really double silly. So I had free ones that I, <laughs> I shouldn't have had. And so I was selling your data and privacy and paying and getting widgets and things you didn't really like. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah, exactly. So I ended up calling a few subscriptions, deleting a lot of apps. And then basically I thought it might be interesting to talk about what I ended up keeping. Based on that was the problem to be solved. So what did I end up keeping? Well, the app I ended up making friends with, despite initially not liking at all, was Carrot Weather. So Carrot's default persona is a snarky weather app, which some people adore a snarky weather app. I think that it, that's its greatest feature, I thought. Yeah, I, I, it never never floated my boat, that particular aspect of it. But it's the okay. single most configurable weather app I have ever come across. So whatever in your mind is the way mm. weather apps should be, you can pretty much make Carrot do that. And it even, when Dark Sky went away because Apple bought it, 
you know, some of the data ended up in the Apple weather app, but not in the same shape, not in the same UI that I liked and loved from Dark Sky, which I was a really big fan of. But the very smart people in Carrot Weather made a new preset called Dark Sky. And so you could just go into the settings yeah. and pick it as a preset and then start customizing from there. So I've ended up with like Dark Sky only better because what you can do with Carrot is you can choose different things to go above and below the sort of the 12 hour bars that is the, the thing that made Dark Sky Dark Sky. So I can have my Dark Sky and I can have the sort of the headline for the day. What temperature is it? What is the wind? What's the highs and lows and what's the feels like? I mean, that's all there. And I get a radar map and then I get my my old fashioned Dark Sky stuff. And what you can't see in the screenshot in the show notes is at the bottom, I have, you can set rules so that it only shows you things when something is true. So it only tells me about the wind when it's above, I can't remember how many miles an hour I configured it to. Oh, okay. <laughs> when, the, when the rule has been met. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I was going to say it doesn't lie to you. Well, that's good. <laughs> right. But yeah, so you basically get to say, only show me this thing at the bottom here, which I have set up to be a bright orange color. When something I want to notice has happened. So I have it set for how much it's going to rain today and how much wind there's going to be, particularly the gust strength, which is what, as a cyclist, like a, a strong wind is annoying, a gusty wind is dangerous. So I, I want to know. Right, right. And it's, yeah, I've ended up really, really loving carrot weather. Uh, but the first thing I did was turn the slider from snarky down to polite because they give you a slider. <laughs> And it can be really quite you snarky. polite thing. Yes. So that's the one that <laughs> definitely Stephen gets sends me. Stephen gets sends me screenshots of carrot weather all the time, usually <laughs> making fun of Americans in some way of something that's happened in our news or something. Yeah. And the other thing, so as well as having customizable pieces of the UI, you can also have customizable alert alerts. So you know, like a typical, like a normal alert on iOS. So at quarter to eight every morning, if the probability of rain rises above 25% for any hour in the day, I get a pop-up notification on my phone just as I'm about to leave the door for work that says umbrella alert. And then I just pick up my umbrella as I walk out the door. And you can tweak it and customize it and pick a different time. And you could have a sunscreen alert, right? You could say that if the UV index is going to go above a certain amount, tell me at a, the time I care about. I mean, I, you know, it would depend on your, your your habits, but basically you customize it yourself. So any metric, you can turn it into an alert. And, you know, that again is very powerful, but very takes effort to customize it. But when you do it once, it's really rewarding. And they have a nice selection of traditional widgets. So they're not the interactive-y kind of widgets. You click on the widget and it just opens the carrot app. But nonetheless, they are information dense. So even if you pick a two by two widget, it's actually giving you more than just one metric. It's actually giving you some useful information in the two by two. And if you're prepared to go bigger, if you're prepared to give it a two by four or a four by four, it actually becomes really quite good about the information it gives you. But you know, it's nice traditional widgets, but not as fancy as what we'll come across later. And the other okay. app that's... and is, Sorry. Wait a minute. So are you going to talk about whether it's got a watch app or not? Or does that come up later with the other ones? That comes up later because I never ended up using Carrot on the watch. It, I don't... I'm not even okay. sure it has a watch app. But if it does, it didn't strike me enough to keep. Um, okay. All right. So the other app is one I've also had for a while. It's called Rain Today. And I bought it when Dark Sky went away because I wanted a new radar app. And I ended up realizing it was actually nicer. It's, I find its UI more pleasing. And it seems that its weather source is more Europe-centered. I find it's better here than Dark Sky was here. I wouldn't... I don't even know if it even covers other parts, uh, which parts of the world it covers, but I know that here okay. it's really good. And it's called Rain Today, so it's obviously aimed at me. And I only use it for one feature. It, it, it claims to be a full-on weather app and it claims to show you everything. But honestly, what I use it for is this radar screen. And you will recognize the screenshot in the show notes because that's exactly the kind of screenshot you get from me all the time is, is the, the rainfall radar one. Um <laughs> It's zoomed out a little bit, but uh, other than that... Yeah, it is, because I, I don't mind people knowing I live in Maynooth. 
But when I zoom it into my usual zoom level, it's a little too where in Maynooth I live. Oh, too close to home. A little too close. Yeah, to the home. weird thing about this is it doesn't show any rain around your house. So I don't know if I'm buying this one. <laughs> well, it happened to be at five to eight this morning. It was quite a nice day today. Um, and the oh, really okay. good thing is that the slider is really good. So the animation on the slider is not jerky. A lot of the weather apps give you like a step, 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 step when you slide the slider for the time. But the, the one on rain today is perfectly smooth, including into the future. And so it, it's really fun to, to slide it back and then to slide it forward. You get a really good feel for what is actually happening here, what's actually going on, which is very helpful for dodging the rain. So I'm a huge fan of rain today. And they do have a widget, but I don't like its zoom level. So it ended up not being the widget that got kept. Okay. The next app is... I've been waiting to see if any of these are going to apply to me. And I guess rain today wouldn't be the one I should pick. Well, if it ever showed anything, be surprised. <laughs> I don't know, maybe when you travel to, to Texas or whatever, do you, does it do weather down there? Oh, gosh. It rained six inches in an hour at my son's house recently. Okay, well, then you might want to yes. on your trips away. <laughs> For there. The next app that really, really gets kept is one I adore on the iPad. I use it on the iPhone because when you have nothing else with you, a small screen is better than no screen. But this app loves screen real estate. And I got it from my brother, who is a wind turbine blade maintainer. So he climbs up those giant big wind turbines and scales down the blades to fix the fiberglass. I am petrified of heights. We obviously have very different genes, even though we're brothers. But he is obsessed with the wind because it, well, it's vital for his safety. And I was always yeah, complaining yeah. that none of the weather apps give you good wind for when you're cycling because they just basically give it to you to the cardinal directions. And there can be quite a difference between northeast and east. And if the weather app is just giving you these rough estimations, particularly on a particularly windy day, it's actually not really that pleasing. And if the wind is going to change and stuff. So my brother was like, oh, no, no, you want this animated app. And it's called Ventusky. And... Hmm. What you can't see in the screenshot is that those lines of wind are animated. And Oh, okay. So they're whipping around if it's whipping around or yeah. all sliding down in one direction. And if you zoom all the way out, you can see what a low pressure looks like. And they're also color coded. So th this morning it was a very calm day, so it's all blue, but it goes yellow and orange and green and purple, depending on quite how windy it gets. And you can move it over back. So when I'm leaving the house, my intention is I cycle. I want to cycle home with the wind in my back. So I don't really care what the wind is doing now. Nearly as much as I care what the wind will be doing an hour from now and two hours from now. But I can just click forward the timeline and I can watch the arrows change. So if the wind is swinging, you literally see the animation sweep over and back is what's going to happen. It's such a good way. Or when the wind is very heavily curved because you're right at the middle of a low pressure you can tell that halfway along my cycle i'm going to be in a different direction of wind it's just really cool so the I, only time i really looked at a, a wind map was when we were on the ship in antarctica the captain suggested we look at one to see what was coming our way and and how what a big effect it had going through the Drake channel where we got super lucky because it was only like 13 foot waves we were like so lucky. It's like, woohoo, winner, winner. That 30 is not out of the question for there. It's like a normal, that's Tuesday, not a bad day. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just imagining. <laughs> Bart's what looking it's at like. a ceiling and. <laughs> no, I'm thinking, that's a lot of wave. That's about, yeah. Mm. Yeah. The, the ship wasn't very big. It only had, I don't know, I want to say it was like 150, 200 passengers, something like that, but Jeez. it had really good stabilizers. Oh, good. So. At, at one point, the uh, one of the stabilizers went out, and uh, we happened to be eating breakfast down at a lower deck, like on the second deck, I think. But everybody we knew that was on the sixth floor uh, deck having breakfast, everything just flew off the tables, and everybody fell over, and wow. we didn't even know what happened. That's how stable it was down below. Huh. Like, what? it was a little rocking motion, and didn't know about it until we came up, and everybody was like, oh my god, that was amazing. So. so any other ship without the big stabilizers, what they experienced was Oof. the norm. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in a strange... So anyway, that's the only time I paid attention to wind. <laughs> so we, yeah, of course, you have, you probably have sea breezes. It's probably always coming from, from the sea into you or something or from the land into the sea. Yeah. When it comes from the land, it's called a Santa Ana wind. 
and the temperature goes up like 10 degrees when that happens. Most of the time, uh, it's an offshore breeze. So, or, or offshore, is that the way you say it? Anyway, onshore, it comes from the ocean towards us. Yeah. Onshore breeze, yeah. Um, and that's what uh, usually keeps us cooler down by the beach anyway. Cool. So ironically... But uh, uh, big days at like eight miles an hour. Like We get all <laughs> excited at 14. You know, that's like, oh, oh wow. my gosh, did you feel that gust? Yeah, okay. that's a big day. Yeah, we, our numbers are definitely different. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what's I mean, I don't use Ventusky to its full power because I just care about the ground, but you can actually tell at what height you want the wind at. So 10 meters is the lowest it'll go. But my brother works off at a 100 meter height. And so he can actually say, I want to know the wind at 100 meters. And you can get it in meters per second, which is how all the safety regulations mm. in Europe are written. I don't care about meters per second. I don't understand them. But he doesn't care about miles an hour or kilometers an hour. He doesn't understand those. It's like, no, no, meters per second. That was my training. So he has his set to meters per second, whereas I have it in kilometers an hour. Uh, but it actually has a better widget for radar images than Rain Today, because Rain Today insists on putting all the town names on it. And on the widget, you just want a dot where you are and a maybe one or two place names. But you don't want a clutter of like, especially on your on the, phone screen, you don't want a clutter of 10 place names on a two by four widget. Like, there's not a lot of room there. And Right, right. And the Rain Today one lets you pick different zoom levels. And all the ones I want are in between the settings they allow. So it's either the whole island of Ireland, because you can have it country level, or you can have it province level, which it considers to be our county, which is very small in Ireland. Our counties are tiny. And it's just, I want something halfway in between, and it's just not possible. Whereas the one from Ventusky is just perfect. It has like one or two towns. It has the perfect zoom level. And it's equally as pretty. Um, so I end up using their rain radar. But other than that, that's the only thing I use it for. It's just just the wind. But I do use their, their rain radar. And then we go on to the new app that I got from Federico Vitici. And this app's job is to tell you what it's going to do in terms of rain. And it represents the day as a bar of different colors. A dark gray means... Yeah, I'm looking at your screenshot and I can't tell... What on earth it's telling me? So if you look at Sunday, it's a really good example. So Sunday morning, it says clear. And then the first dot is sunrise. The second dot is midday. And the third dot is sunset. You have the two... Okay, ten when he says dot, he means micro dot. There's this teeny, teeny, tiny little light blue dot below each of these strips. Yeah. And so... And and it says clear on Sunday, but on, on today, it's got a white area that doesn't say clear, but I'm guessing white means clear. White is always clear. So it clear. only shows it to you when it has enough. Yes. But it says clear when it has enough room to say clear. Or okay. cloudy or whatever. Yeah. So basically, white means clear, blue means it's raining, and the shades of gray in between are a little bit overcast, fully overcast, or oh, raining. Oh, okay. And... It tells you the high and the low temperature, and there's a little arrow, a little orange arrow some days when there's a dramatic change in temperature. Tuesday has a dramatic change in temperature, so it basically has a little up arrow to say the temperature does something weird here. It's like, you know. Okay. okay. Uh, but its widgets are the same as what you're seeing here. So on a two by four widget, you get today and tomorrow as just this quick strip and you literally can just say do I want to go cycle in the afternoon or the morning and you just have this strip and it's just that is the question right that, in one look that is the question answered so hang on which wait which which it's on where on so on, on iPhone you mean yeah so on the iPhone you can have a two by four widget that will basically give you the Saturday Sunday view okay, here I just didn't know whether you're talking about watch or or Mac or where you were talking about. Okay. You're talking about on the iPhone widget that's on the on your home screen. Yeah. Home screen widgets. Yeah. Okay. The other thing it does is it has a lock screen widget that is extremely dynamic. It gives you, hmm. if it's raining, it gives you like a little, a bar chart of rain. So the next 60 minutes, how heavy is the rain going to be as a little rising and falling bar chart? And when is the rain going to end? If it's not okay. raining, it gives you the current temperature and a description of what's going to happen, but it's really dynamic because it's not always the same format. So sometimes, where did I put the screenshot for this one? I get this. Oh no, the screenshot's further down. Sorry. 
So if you scroll down to where I have remaining widgets, the screenshot with my little fishies, because I, I, I got that screen, that, that screen background of the, the fishies from the very first iPhone presentation. Um, so the uh, first of okay, the three nothing's stacked named, on, so I don't know where I'm looking. So the three stacked on oh, top of each oh, other. Oh, so it looks... Let, let me explain to people uh, when they go to the show notes. This is really confusing. It jumps around. So he goes through all of them, but then now we've jumped down to remaining widgets, but and we're going back through the same apps that we saw earlier. So it's not all this about an app, all this about an app. It's... it's yeah, uh, maybe we should stick to that actual we're talking. To th maybe I'll say pause that and say that r r it looks like rain comes back. Maybe that's the best thing to do, not to confuse people. Okay, okay, because because it's confusing me. Yes, so let's not do it okay. that way. And then we come on to Weather Up, which is the app with the that I heard the interview with the developer, and it's brand new and it's very much focused on the newest of technologies. So it is the developer actually says my app is a widget first app. You might never open the app. You, you could install the widget hmm. and never open the app and love the app. If you open the app... Now, you've, again, you've got a screenshot or you've got a photo of your watch. Are you talking about watch or iPhone now? Yes. Or both. Everywhere. This, this, okay. this app is everywhere and it is really nice everywhere. And so the hmm. widgets on every place that they exist are all interactive. So when you tap on the widget, it expands out to show you more information right within the widget. So you really can see all of the traditional weather data in the widget. So if you open the app, you don't want the traditional weather data because you have that. So what would you want? You'd want a map. And so his opinion of the app is, for the normal stuff, the widget has everything you need. If you're going to open the app, I'm going to assume that you care about seeing, literally seeing a bigger picture. So I'm going to have my default view on my app is the map with the weather information hmm. below okay. it. Okay. And so it's kind of an interesting design. So I don't actually open the app very often with one notable exception we'll get to in a minute, but the widgets are genuinely as useful as, as you could possibly imagine. So... The watch app for a start is actually a nice weather app. So on the watch, it's actually a nice app. So the first picture of my, my wrist is the full on app on my watch. And unlike the Apple weather app, where you're always swiping between screens to go from temperature to this, to that, to the other. What mm -hmm. you can see there is that right now it is raining. There's going to be a very slight gap and then it's going to rain some more because that's what those little... Those little, uh, see those little bar charts? They the are little blue dots. Now, that's the a little drizzle. Blue dots under the graph? Yeah, that's a drizzle. Oh. <laughs> those, okay, those would be taller if it was raining. If it's really, really heavy, they can go all the way to the top. That's when you're going to get properly okay. wet. So that's basically the day. That's That was this morning. So that's today from now until 8 p.m. is one slip there. And so you can see starting off with some drizzle, dry bit, some more drizzle, and then the afternoon was nice, which it was. The temperature is the wiggly line, and you get sort of the lows and highs are called out, and where it calls out the temperature, it gives you a little picture of the weather. So quite a bit of cloud, less cloud, back to less cloud. And then you can see the next three days at a glance below. 35% chance of rain, 11 degrees to 3 degrees, mostly sunny. Saturday, one degree to 11 degrees. One. It's it's nearly <laughs> May. Why is it one degree? It's terrible. By the way, um, I really recommend people go to the App Store and look at Weather Up because they're great animations. They've got little videos and stuff. But unlike what Bart said, it does not have an exclamation point. Oh. It doesn't have it in the in the App Store. And I went to the um, contrast.co is the developer, mm. and it does not have an exclamation point there either. Did it once so it? don't think you have the wrong one. Okay, that's interesting. Let's, we should fix that in the show notes then. Um, I am doing it as we speak. Excellent. That looks really pretty. I'm, I might need to get that one because I, what I really want is on my watch. Right. I, I want no, I want to know right there. Yeah. So that straight away it had me one with this watch app doesn't suck. So that was nice. Um, the other thing is it runs on the Mac and an M series Mac. The iPad app actually runs because most of the weather apps for reasons i do not understand the developers opted out 
of being available on the Mac. Yeah. It really drives me nuts because there's that. some great apps and they'd love the more screen space, but they're not allowed. Whereas Weather Up absolutely is allowed on the Mac. And when I said it was map first, you can see in the screenshot from the Mac, that's what it does when you give it a lot of screen real estate. So when you turn it from not a widget into a full on app, it says, well, you want something more. Here's the map. So I have my radar. And below it, I have the traditional weather stuff, but it's in a little sort of drawer that I can slide down or slide up and I can switch from hourly to 10 day or whatever. So it's actually kind of a very sensible thing. If you want to see more than a widget, okay, then go for it. Show me more. Show me all the more. Yeah. Yeah. That one, that one looks really, really nice. I like watching how it moves in the videos on the, uh, on the app store. That yeah. looks probably the most interesting of the ones you've shown yet. That looks that looks slick. And I actually, I'm not a big widget person. I have uh, just a couple, and one of them is weather. Well, then definitely Mostly give it's, this a go. Uh, you know, how much sunscreen do I need? And, uh, you know, am I going to wear shorts or, or a light pa- pants and a T-shirt, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so I definitely give it a go, because th- that animation, that is the interactive widget. So that sort of is like a whole normal weather app, but it's right there in the widget. Is, just is it configurable? Like, can I choose to see a UV index where you choose to see rain? I don't know. I Okay. Because it did I'll what I wanted out. and I didn't really check. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not your job to check for me. That is true. And everyone is going to want different things, right? And then the last app I have is the Nerd app. If you're a data nerd... This app, and it's iPad only, and it doesn't run on the Mac, which is very annoying, and it doesn't even run on the iPhone. This is a pure iPad app, but it graphs weather metrics for 10 days. When I say graph, I mean the sunshine is shown as a series of bar charts, one bar chart for every two-hour period. If the yellow goes all the way to the top, it means 60 minutes of sun. Yours would be very flat, I imagine. Maybe the mornings will be <laughs> ramping up and then flattening off and then ramping up and then flattening off, I guess. But you can see for me, it's quite variable. Saturday in particular starts lovely, goes awful and then gets lovely again. And Sunday isn't looking all the best. The wind gives you two bar charts on top of each other, which is average speed and gust. So the light blue is the gust. The dark blue is the average speed. The air pressure is just a wiggly line. But, and if you scroll up and down, there's actually stuff like humidity, UV index, You can ha- and you can reorder them. You can actually pick up the metrics and have them in whatever order you care about. So that's sort of my order there. Um, it's just the most wonderfully nerdy, and it goes for 10 days into the future, which is kind of impressive. And so you can really see the big picture trends as you swipe over and back. Wow. I, I'm trying to think of how to write the alt tag for this one. It's like a whole bunch of data on one screen. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it is It is the data nerds weather app, right? It's just metric, metric, metric. Um, as I say, Now, I, this one you said, uh, this only runs on iPad? Yes, only runs on iPad, not even on the iPhone. And very much to my surprise and annoyance, not, a, not permitted on the Mac, which made me cranky. Yeah. And this is weather, that was Weather Pro HD? Weather Pro HD. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that is traditional apps. So how, what widgets have won their way into my heart? Which widgets are, am I actually using? So if you start on the iOS lock screen, you only have four slots. Like there are, it's a four, it's, it's a four by one matrix and some of the widgets take up two. I really, really care about my battery levels and things. So I have a widget dedicated to my watch battery and to my phone battery, which means me with two slots. And I had been using those, sort of having to decide between which weather stuff. And it was actually, none of them were really good. I could either see the rain or I could see the temperature. But I've ended up using Looks Like Rain because their widget changes its shape depending on what you sh- what it thinks is important. So what you would expect from it is tell me what it's doing in terms of the rain right now. And so if it is going to rain in the next 60 minutes, you get the first screenshot, which is a little bar chart. Now, this is drizzle again. Th- those bars would go all the way up to the bottom of the end of rain if it was going to be heavy rain. But this is the same morning where we saw the drizzle in the other app. So, you know, it's just little, little dots. Um, but that's really useful to see what it's going to do for the next 60 minutes. But if it's not actually raining, 
It gives you these wonderfully English, you, you get a row of the obvious icons, it's now 7 degrees, it's going to have a low of 3 and a high of 10, great. It is now mostly cloudy, tomorrow partly cloudy. But sometimes it will say stuff like later cloudy, or when I came home from my exercise it said soon clear. So it, it, it really changes depending on what what's happening with the weather. So yes, it's using up two of my slots, but it's always telling me something important. It's never just a wasted space. Which okay, I- well, that's good. I was really confused by this screenshot because it shows three different kinds of weather going on, but it's got three different clocks, but it's all in one, it was all in one image. And I wasn't sure what, what was going on now that you've explained it. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. And so you can see basically it's Thursday, Thursday, Thursday morning, Thursday evening and Friday morning is basically when, 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 when those screenshots are. But again, they're, you know, they're different because I took a screenshot and then I went, oh, that's what it does. And then I took another screenshot. Oh, that's really different. And I took another one and I was like, oh, it's different again. Um, so I figured I'd combine them for you. The other thing that is my widget screen. And this is basically where I want to swipe left and I want to have lots of information, but I don't want it in my face all the time. And so the three widgets that have made it there are looks like rain. So I have my two bars for today and the next day. And so you can see what is the shape of my weather. It turned out to be quite nice these two days. Normally there's blue in there. Then I have my weather up, which is fully interactive, clickable to see the detail and stuff right there in the widget. And then I have my rainfall radar from Ventusky, which, you know, it's there are some cities there, but it's not a big cluttery mess. It's, you know, it's also not too bad in terms of rain. Um, that screenshot. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So that gave you the best of all worlds with all the three different apps doing the doing the work. Yeah. And if you scroll above that is actually my calendar. So the very, very top thing, if you when I open my side screen, is actually my calendar. But I didn't think that was should be in the screenshot because you don't need to know what my meetings were this morning. Um, and then below that is the calculator app, which is also an interactive widget. It's Sorry, it's PCalc because the actual calculator app is terrible. It's PCalc because it's great. Um, I've never understood why everybody loves PCalc. I, I see no problem to be solved on the I Mac use the, the, I pull down in the middle of the screen and I type in my equation where search is yeah okay but 12 if, times 268 and it gives me the answer if you want to do more than that I don't like typing it all in like that I prefer to click on the giant big buttons and on the Mac it's great because you can have it as a floating window above everything else and it can do that you know like an old school mechanical calculator with a scrolling piece of paper it can do that on the Mac. And yeah. so when I'm working on accounts and stuff, I just love having it behave like an old mechanical calculator. Um, and you can stick it in RPN if you if your brain works that way. Um, yeah, a calculator can do that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it can I'd do be... RPN. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, do I, I just don't get it. I I use a real RPN calculator in, in physical space or I use the RPM, uh, uh, the HP 11C emulator on my iPhone. I still don't get it. You know, anywhere you are, uh, you've got Spotlight, you've got a calculator right there. Launching an app and waiting for it to come up and typing things in, I don't know. I mainly bought it for the Mac so I could have it as a floating palette when I'm doing my accounts and stuff. It's just a floating palette that's always there. And that's actually, I find that really useful. Um, And, you know. Yeah, I'm wrong because everybody (laughs) seems to love it. Everybody thinks the developer is the most awesome person on earth. And I'm sure he is delightful. I just don't see what problem it solves. He's a good podcast guest, even if you don't like his app. He's, he's always good fun when he is on with Micah and co on uh, Clockwise. Yeah. Clockwise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He seems awesome. Yeah. I never want to. Don't anybody tell him I think his app has no use because <laughs> everybody else finds a great use for it. I, I, I just don't. I don't get it. Doesn't it's one of the solve longest running Mac apps. He's been making his living and he still makes his living off it. So clearly enough people think like me. He, and I'm pretty sure there's a Vision OS version of it as well. Yes, there is. You're, yes, there is. Because he was like, well, why not? Right. You know, I have the canonical. He makes calculator. a dice game, too, that people are wild about for Dungeons and Dragons, I think, or something. I think that's one <laughs> Again, of those developers scratch their own itch thing. I, I think that's what's going on there. Um, I know Mike is also a Dungeons and Dragons person. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. So that brings us on to the iPhone home screen widgets. And. For a long time, I used to have two by four widgets, but I ended up fighting for space. 
And so for my personal focus, I wanted to get as much weather as I could into a two by two. And that was very, very unsatisfying for a long time. But eventually I found that carrot weather actually gives me useful information in a two by two. So it gives me, it's not the next four hours, it's the next four two hour slots. So I guess that's the next eight hours in English. Um, But it's in in granularity of two hours. And so you can see that today we had a nice steadily climbing temperature. But unfortunately, the cloud built up as the day went on. Uh, But I did have 0% (laughs) chance of rain, which was nice. And obviously when you tap on it, you go straight I know you said you're really interested. Oh, sorry. I I know you said you're really interested in in your batteries. I don't understand it, Bart. You've got a 15 Pro Max. It's got like a four-month battery in it. You've got the giant watch that lasts forever. Well, when Apple does the battery... You've got screen real estate you could use now. When Apple does the battery optimization thing, I actually need to be careful. When Apple only charges my watch... At 80% on those giant devices? Yeah. I, (laughs) I track so many workouts every day. Yeah. I, I do run out sometimes. Huh. And my headphones I do need to keep track of because they do not have magic infinity yeah. power. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll give you the headphone one. Yeah. You're, you're talking about your Air, AirPods Max? Uh, well, it, it would be now, but uh, usually my um, bone conduction headphones. The um, Oh, and they show up in the in this widget? Yeah, that is actually, that is, that, that headphone one is actually the, the Bluetooth headset my my um, bone conduction headset. It's oh, so whatever Bluetooth headset you're connected to, it'll be that one? I see. Yeah. Okay. And cool. I- if I connect another Bluetooth device, it will fill in gap number four there. Um, so yeah, Carrot Weather actually is another providing a really nice, and because it's the Carrot one, I can tap on it and it jumps me straight into my favorite iOS weather app. So that, that's kind of nice. So that's the personal focus. But for the work one, I really actually just want to be able to look down and see when am I grabbing my lunchtime walk? When am I when am I grabbing exercise or whatever during the middle of the day? And it's just, I actually found that I really do want the two by four of looks like rain when I'm in work. It actually works better for me there. Um, and because strangely enough, I only need a two by two for my calendar in work because genuinely all I care about is what's next. I, I don't need to know the I just need to know where am I supposed to be when? <laughs> How long is it me time and when is it not me time anymore? Um and I have very, very few apps I actually need while I'm in work. It really is just Teams and Outlook. So that sort of means I had lots of screen space, which meant I could go go wild on, on my widgets. Um so yeah. And I yeah, then in terms of watch OS, oh yeah, my final widget. So you can the last picture of my wrist is the weather up widget on my watch. That and that whole center thing, that tells me absolutely everything in one beautiful weather widget. Which means that I now have free again my moon phase, which used to have the temperature, because when I put the Apple weather rain one, I didn't get the temperature, I only got the rain. And when I wanted to care about the wind, I couldn't have my sunrise, which is now sitting happily in the top right. So basically I've now have nicer weather than I've ever had on the watch. And I have my moon phase back and the sunrise and sunset back, um, which is particularly now, what's the moon enough. phase for? I know people love the moon phase too, and I don't get what that's for. Uh, in the winter, it makes a really big difference when I'm cycling because I oh, need more it's light, isn't it? Yeah, I need more powerful headlights on a dark night than a moon night. It's, it makes a difference. Wow. Our world is so different. And by the by the way, when he says night, he means like 4.30 p.m., right? Mm. That's about uh, All right, our what he's sunset, talking about. Uh, like our sunset, particularly in spring and autumn, I really care about the sunset as well, because our sunset can be as early as, as 16.20. 16.20, that's 16 minus 4, 12, 4, 4.20. Yeah, so not even 5 p.m. when the sun's already set. And that means that it is dark when I, when I finish work at 5 o'clock. It's like, great. And it was a, it was still dark when I get into the office, you know. So you get up and you leave the house at eight o'clock, and it's dark. And you come home at five o'clock, and it's dark. And then, of course, in, in the summer we get the opposite. The sun doesn't set until like twenty three something. Uh, so in spring and autumn, you really do care about those sunrise and sunset times. That- Why well, get sunrise and sunset? It never occurred to me that moon phase was going to be part of it too. Is it the same widget? Uh, well, no, so I have one top and one bottom, right? So or you got one of each. Yeah, which are my two freed up slots. 
But I used to have the dedicate. Okay, to... it's kind of in the reflection. I didn't notice that was the moon down in the bottom right. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I'm so jealous of the size of that screen, but that looks like an iPhone strapped on my wrist if I had that. <laughs> Yeah, it is not a small watch, but it is also it's the first time I've had a sapphire screen and that thing genuinely does not scuff because I I'm pretty good about not banging my watch off things, but I've always had one or two scratches after a year. This thing still looks pristine. Mm. This thing looks absolutely pristine. I seem to have scuffed the titanium. The titanium has a tiny little bit of patina on it here and there, but that sapphire screen is perfect. Yeah, I do. So it. there's one big thing missing from this, Bart. Is there? How much do all these things cost? You didn't talk about cost on any of them. They're all between five and ten, uh, five and ten a year, I think. I think it's a year. A year? I think I'm paying them yearly. Oh, okay. I'm certainly not paying them monthly. Yeah, actually, you're right. I should have looked up the in-app purchases, but I didn't think to do that. Yeah, are you sure? Because usually weather apps cost per month. Or per year. Well, but per year, I mean, but five bucks a year, that's pretty cheap. I, I definitely pay for them per year and they might be as high, one or two of them might be as high as 20, but they're certainly not more than no, that. that. That's still, that's noise level, not, not uh, sell a kidney level. That's all I was looking for, really. Right. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. And I, I don't do any of them monthly. I do them all yearly um, and they are not my most expensive yearly subscription because that is definitely um, my fitness pal at 50 50 euro that is my most expensive and that one made me think twice three times and then a fourth time and then i still bought it anyway uh but none of the weather ones do that too. yeah but bart that's the one that keeps you alive right exactly so i right. on, on the whole it's like yeah okay i'm prepared to give you that but yeah none of, none of these are in that ballpark together though they are <laughs> add them all up starting you to get up. there yeah, yeah. But I'm happy I think I'm going to I think I'm going to buy weather up based on what you've said. That uh, really is pretty. Just if nothing else watching the animations on the uh, on the website is uh is really or on the um, app store is really fun. And the developer just sounded like his way of thinking about things chimed with me so well. I was like I like the way this this person's brain works. And when you use his mm -hmm. app, it's like, okay, yeah, his brain, he's really thought about the, he's sweated the detail here. It's wonderful. And he's using all the latest APIs because it's a brand new app. So it's using all of the shiny fun, whereas an older app will have mm -hmm. been using the shiny fun from then. And they don't always, it's not the same, right? If you, Retrofitting new shiny does not give you a good an experience as designing for the newest features from the ground up. Well, all, there's also the developer's ability to design with style. You know, yes. I'm always in awe of that because I don't have it. Oh, ditto. <laughs> uh, but I've seen, I've, I've got some apps that are just great apps, but they look like I draw them, you know? It's, <laughs> I, I, want better, I want better than that, you know? Yeah. I mean, and this is just slick. I mean, it's just really... It's really it took a designer's eye. I mean, I hate to admit that maybe that A in Steam... Uh, is somehow uh, important, but uh, it kills me to say it, but I think it probably is a necessary piece of uh, making technology work. I really do. It makes it more human friendly. Yeah, I, 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 would, I, I would not argue against that at all. In fact, I think I may have argued in favor of the A in Steam with you at some stage. Um, yeah. Man, I'm going to give up all, everything. Now I'm a Markdown fan. <laughs> I'm reading the manual these days. I I'm going to say there's an A in Steam. You're ruining me. I did enjoy hearing you say that about the manual in last week's show. It made me chuckle while I was out walking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the funny part is I was yelling at Bart today for not writing today's show notes in Markdown. <laughs> and he's the one who talked me into Markdown. So There is an irony to that. All right. There? Well, this was... Yeah, there really is. You shouldn't have taught me. All right. This was really fun. I enjoyed this. And uh, I'm going to go buy me a weather app. Yay. My job here. I've spent Allison's money. My job here is done, folks. <laughs> so until next time, happy computing. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chit Chat Across the Pond Light. Did you notice there weren't any ads in the show? That's because this show is not ad supported. It's supported by you. If you learned something, or maybe you were just entertained, consider contributing to the Podfeet podcast. You can do that by going over to podfeet.com and look for the big red button that says support the show. When you click that button, you're going to find different ways to contribute. If you'd like to do a one-time donation, you can click the PayPal button. If you want to make a recurring contribution, click the weekly Patreon button. 
You're only charged when I publish an episode of the NoSillaCast, which, let's face it, it's every single week, so I don't charge Patreon for Chit Chat Across the Pond Light or Programming by Stealth episodes. Another way to contribute is to record a listener contribution. It's a great way to help the NoSilla Castaways learn from you and takes a little bit of the load off of me doing all the work. If you want to contact me for any reason, you can email me at allison at podfeed.com, and I really encourage you to follow me on Mastodon at podfeed at chaos.social. Maybe you want to talk to the other NoSilla Castaways. You can do that in our Slack group at podfeed.com slash Slack. Thanks for listening, and stay subscribed.